right guys, well welcome to a new episode of Burn Eights. This is a different style of video than we normally put out, but it's basically, we just got into summer here and we got an opportunity to gain some knowledge because we're always learning. We're far from experts in the musky world, but um, we also wanted to share some of this knowledge with you guys. So we got an opportunity to have Rich Reinert in Jake's boat here on a night and we're gonna talk a little bit about some musky baits. But a little background on Rich, I mean, you, we got to know you through the Wisconsin Muskie Expo. That's right. And it's been, a, it's been a great experience as far as we've had a booth there a couple of the last two years, and it's been awesome to be hands-on with the fans and just shaking hands, talking, and hearing what you guys got all have to say about our videos, and we appreciate you watching them. But, I mean, as far as your background, so we got to know you through the Expo. You run the Wisconsin Muskie Expo. You've been doing that for years, right? I founded the Muskie Expo 10 years ago, and then due to some health reasons i moved to florida and uh and so then i you know mike etzel who was with me from day one he basically runs the day-to-day -day operations i'm still there you know we were you know to run the show it takes all year sure. to run it you know right so you know we essentially i'm still involved but mike runs the show right now yep and then as far as your background in musky fishing i mean you grew up in the you grew up in the Northwoods, basically. I mean, that was that was where you you were a guide up there, full time guide for what seventeen years? You said seventeen years. When you know, I the only reason that I walked away. If you'd have told me years ago that you know that I was gonna walk away after seventeen years, I'd look at you like you were nuts. But I think you know, I had a wife, you know, kid, I you know, wife, kids, you know. I mean, and I treat it as a living. And you know, with the the progress of the Northwoods. Uh, I mean, let's face it, they're taking the, the woods right out of the north. Mm -hmm. And so I could see the right on the wall and I, I just kind of moved on. I still always kept my fingers in the, in the musky tackle industry and, you know, sure. and I was in that for 38 years. Right. I, yeah. I remember you saying that and it's, it's pretty impressive as far as your bait knowledge and a lot of hands-on stuff that you, I mean, as far as some of the baits you've helped develop over the years and that you've just, I mean, as far as advice you've given to, you know, different people and whatnot. I mean, it's you're, the knowledge that comes with 38 years of experience in, in the musky industry or the musky world is can really rack up to a lot. I mean, well, I'm going to tell you about the musky, you know, the tackle industry when you look at baits in the market. And I see this a lot where, you know, I, one of the worst things that ever happened to musky fishing is Facebook. You know, you get guys on there bickering and, you know, debating about different companies. Let me just tell you this. You know what? Nobody, I mean, Baits today are nothing more than duplications of baits that were made 50 years ago. And I know because I was there 50 years ago. The only thing that's changed in the musky fishing industry is actually the price of the baits and the paint they're putting on it. Sure. But yeah. the baits today, you know, the, the biggest thing I see with musky fishermen, and it really hasn't changed, but is musky baits are nothing more than tools. Right. And when you ask, say, maybe, you know, like you guys are younger, Okay, and I say, so when would you use a French blade as opposed to maybe a Colorado blade? And nobody younger can answer that question. So, and, and that goes back to it being a tool. I mean, right. there's a time and place for that. Mm -hmm. and that. And that in turn, you know, spells success. True. I'll just give you a quick example. I was, I was going to a body of water uh, close by to where I was going to do a seminar. So we got there. The buyer from a sporting goods store asked me, he wanted to see how I was going to approach a body of water. So I went out fishing with them. I, he got me a map prior to this. I picked three spots on the map. I checked all three spots out. We actually started fishing at roughly right around, you know, 20 to 1 by 5 o'clock. We had 11 muskies in the boat. Really? There was another guy going to the muskie club meeting and saw that I was out there. He was throwing another bait. And it, we were both throwing bucktails, okay? Yep. The difference in my bucktail was a, it was a French blade and smaller. The panfish were in spawning up on the flats. That, that French blade got down deeper into the water. The weather was unstable. So therefore, you know, when a muskie, you know, you know whether it feeds on, on forage and or, you know, is going after a bait, what controls a, fish, a muskie strike zone is the weather conditions. Sure. So if the fish are active, they might move, depending on the clarity of the water, they might move anywhere from three feet in dark stained water to seven feet in, when they're active. Mm -hmm. When they're neutral, you can cut that strike zone in half 
and then if they're inactive, you basically got to put that bait right in front of them. So in the case of you know of going fishing, we were getting that you know French blade down into the strike zone. We were catching fish. He was using a fluted blade, which was up high, running high. Yep. He didn't even ever see a fish. And that was kind of like example of this past weekend with Jake. We had a, a side mus muskie we saw on side imaging. We threw two different baits at it. Nothing. He, he says, let's maybe go a little bit deeper, which it was a post frontal day. And we were, you know, so he threw a, he threw an X toad at it and the thing followed it to the boat and ate it. So deeper in the water, water column was the key for that because I threw a bucktail at it. He threw a, he twitched a, a minnow bait over the top of it and we got, we got, no, we had nothing going. So we got a little bit deeper with that. And, Perfect example yeah. right there. Again, yeah. and it happens countless times. The thing of it is with muskies, they've got to be able to feel it through their lateral line. They've got to be able to hear it through their inner ear. And then once they do that, they've got to be able to see it. Right. Now, to make a comment about that, you know, your bait that you're using has to have the proper sound and vibration. Now that's all hypothetical to, you know, maybe to a lot of people yeah. that that's just theory. Now, back in the old days, years ago, 30 years ago, we had access to high frequency sound equipment. We understand that's so. Yeah. I've got a friend of mine that used to be the head of research and development for a hospital and in, in optometry. So we understand that muskies do see color. They see greens, they see oranges, they see blues as blacks, they see white and chartreuse as light colored, white. Yep. But they do see orange and, and green. They don't see, you know, they see certain colors. It's interesting you guys actually studied that. Well, and that's the thing, I think musky fishermen today don't. They just get out there and they pound, pound, pound. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but we, oh, listen, we don't have all the answers, but we don't have all the answers, but when I don't have the answers, I have a lot of questions. Yeah. And I think today, I think that's being lost. Sure, yeah. So that's how we get our answers. So yeah. that, you know, has a lot to do with how we choose, you know, I, I choose my baits. Yep. So. Well, I think to start this off, maybe we should go into some of the bucktails here. This will be kind of, we're thinking, we're going to do a little bit, of, this will be a series, maybe a couple of videos here of different baits, you know, whether it's to, it's topwaters, bucktails, um, dive and rise type baits, and we'll kind of break those down and let Rich share some of his experience and knowledge and cast some of these out so that you guys can see what we're all dealing with here. And I think we'll start with, we'll start with bucktails. Well, sure. I feel kind of funny. I'm standing here on the deck. This is Jake's place. <laughs> and I it really is. feel honored that I'm actually standing in his place. Does this mean I'm going to get a 50 inch tonight while I'm doing this? <laughs> and Jake we'll is see. here. Jake is here. <laughs> <laughs> now, wouldn't that be something, huh? That well, would be, that would be cool. I don't know if, you know, I mean, because I know I understand this. And I think, you know, the here's the real cool thing about this, okay? I mean, these guys are out here and they're and they're doing, you know, burning eights. But these guys, you know, are, are really legit. I mean, there's a lot of good YouTube, you know, uh, you know, YouTube, uh, you know, shows out there. I mean, burning eights, I, I love their the way they do things. You know, you've got today's angler. You've got, you know, Smith fishing outdoors. You've yeah. got, you know angling anarchy with brian scaife you have all this stuff and you, you guys it's like that core right there you guys are really i really believe that you guys you three or four are the legit youtubes because what you see is what's happening right now so i can sit here and talk like this and that's what we've always tried to do is you know well, I'm, I'm i'm very listen i've seen a lot of musky fishermen you know in and out of my life you know through the years and you guys are really legit, you know, wow. you're, this is what, you know, I mean, a lot of people talk about content, they want to see you talk more, but you're out there pounding, you're focused, you're trying yeah. to put fish in the boat to give them, you know, a show. And that's, and that that's is, what musky fishing is. That is part is. of it, I mean, we, we have, we've had people say that to us, like, man, you guys don't talk when you're fishing, like, there's literally times that we, I mean, obviously we talk in the boat, but there's times where we are literally so focused that we don't want to miss that one bite, because we know it's coming. And it was just like the other night, like we, we fished for like probably a half hour straight not talking because we had moon coming up in 20 minutes and then we had sunset 15 minutes after that. And it was like game time. You know, I mean, that, and that's kind of what you see on film with us is it's real though. I mean, it's, it's us literally, like you said, fishing to try to get a fish. Man. And, you know, obviously musky fishing is our passion. We love it. And then you take that to another level. Obviously we want to get shows for you guys and content and just to share our experiences and hopefully like 
Rich is going to do tonight, give you guys some tips. And how this started was one of your viewers actually called you and said, why don't you get Rich to come on? Because what he knows yeah. about, you remember that? Right, right. Yeah. That was pretty wild. Yeah, and yeah, he actually, you actually had an experience tuning some of his baits, and he yes. was like, this is interesting things that need to be shared with the muskie community. So I think we should dive right into what you got so for can I So can I kneel down? Yeah. You know, so I mean, you're still being able to see, you know, we're able to see this, right? Yep, yep. Okay, well, you know, first thing we talked about is, you know, and this is not really hard stuff. I mean, this is pretty simple. Yep. You know, when you look at muskie fishing today, you're dealing with the blade, you're dealing with the material that's being used, and of course then the colors, and there's yep. a multitude of colors, but you just brought up, you know, you're really the first one I've actually heard say, a younger guy say, oh yeah, we, you know, the, we saw a fish on the, on the uh, side imaging, side imaging. Yep. and everybody's going to the side of the imaging, but you guys, and you, you, you finished it. Yeah. Most guys are seeing the fish and they're going to throw the same baits and then they don't get a fish and they're going, oh, we saw it, but the fish didn't want to move. But that's that's par partially paying attention to fish earlier in the day that we had moved. We realized, and Jake said, they're, sit they're sticking super tight to the weeds. They're, they were sticking super tight, so it's like we had to find a way to pull them out. And that was, we changed it, he changed up his tool. Right. And it worked, it paid off. So Well, in the case of bucktails, you know, there's not a whole lot to, you know, it's it's not that hard. Yep. You need to understand your blades. In, the ca in this case, this is a French blade, yep. okay? Your French blades, your willow blades have a tendency to run deeper, all right? Now, depending on the size of the willow will dictate, you know, how much vibration, sound and vibration. That's really the key to a bucktail. People need to understand when this bucktail is coming through the water and the blade is revolving around, some of that as it's revolving coming through the water some of that water you know is flowing over the material but some of it is bouncing back sure um this is a willow blade this is <laughs> this bait right here and you know here, here's the other thing i want to say you know i'm going to mention names of baits i'm not out to advertise anybody i'm not advertising but you know i think with people watching i think you want to see this or you want to know what these baits are I mean, I've been real fortunate. I have access to a lot of musky baits on the marketplace. Right. Yeah. This is probably, right now, I would say is one of the hottest bucktails that is on the market. And a lot of people don't know anything about this. Um, it's just, a, it's a super magnum Big willow. Willow blade. Yep. But the key thing is both these mm. blades, okay, um, you know, run deeper. Yep. Now, that being said, it's, you know, this has always been where, you know, we had these around, but now you've got hybrid blades coming along. And I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with the Trilogy. Yep. This is a really good bucktail. I mean, little Fisher Smith, you know who Fisher oh, yeah. is. Yeah, he's been that, hammering them on. Him. Oh, listen, and they're still hammering them on. Yep. You know, they're, you know, they're getting some big fish. And, and, and a lot of people, they look at this bait, it's got, you know, three wings, but it's got a slit. So that thing is vibrating back and forth and it's scratching and it's making sound. Right. That's why these bucktails, you know, are catching a lot of big fish. They, the guys that are making these, you know, have, you know, have mastered the fact of getting sound out of this. Yep. If you get a chance, look at Rocky Point Tackle. Okay, and, and you you can see the video. You can hear what this bait sounds like. Sure. Because he got in to the, you know, on the sound thing. Yep. And so, you know, this thing has been tremendous. But these three baits that we just showed, those baits have a tendency to run deeper in the water column. And so that's going to draw fish that are, you know, usually neutral going into an active state and or vice versa. Mm -hmm. So they run deeper. Yep especially when you're fishing deeper clear lakes. When you start getting into, bait, you know, blades that you want to run higher, you know, the first blade would be the Colorado. And so that, of all the blades, runs the highest. Of course, you can go with tandem Colorados. Yep. And I know you guys like yeah. tandem mates. This is, I'm going to tell you something, when you look at tandem blades versus you know, single Colorado blades. Actually, a single Colorado makes more sound coming through the water than a tandem. Really? What a tandem does, it displaces more water. Sure. So therefore, it's got a totally different profile coming through the water. And this is from like your, when you guys were studying the, the Exactly, sound. exactly. Yeah. The next, of course, is a Indiana. Yep. Now these could be fluted, and everybody's familiar with the old fluted blades. 
But just, just got a 46 on one. There you go. But see, here you go. You, you know, this is how simple this is. I'm going to move here. Yep. Is, you know, this is so simple. You've got French, Willows, hybrid blades, like the Trilogy, and these baits run deep. You know the Trilogy runs deep. Yep. These are the blades that stay up. You know, your Colorados are going to run highest in the water column, and your Indiana is going to be an intermediate in between. Okay? Sure. Material-wise, I think today what's happening is, you know, tinsel's kind of taken over. In the old days, bucktail was, of course, the big thing. Right. Everybody had bucktails. Well, I grew up fishing the Meps Giant Killers. There you go. I mean, it was... One of the best known yeah. bucktails in the marketplace. And it produced a lot of fish for us. Exactly. For now, and I just brought this, you know, this is a typical, you know, I guide on the Chippewa Floge. This was the typical bucktail that you would throw on the chip. Sure. Number eight at Colorado yep. and a bucktail. Okay. But what has happened is tinsel and marabou have taken over. Yeah. And basically what I have found, this is now personal experience, it seems to me that marabou works really well in cooler water temperatures. If we have a cold summer or in the late spring, early summer, yep. marabou seems to produce better than say tinsel. As the water temperatures warm, you know, I resisted from using tinsel for a long time. Yeah. And you know, the more I play with it, the more I'm using it now. Yeah. <clears throat> I would say that's pretty much 90% of what we, th well, 95% of what we throw okay. is tinsel. But that's just because that's kind of what we've grown up, the era we've grown up in, you know. Right. And, but like I said, when I was younger, bucktail was, that's what I, that's what he pulled out the tackle box. My dad's tackle box, my grandpa's tackle box. It was box. a bucktail. Yeah. Well, that's basically what you have. Now, when I say that materials, yes, have I used emu feathers? Have I used peacock feathers? Have I used moose hair? Have I used skunk hair? Yeah. Bucktails have been made out of just about any kind of material you can think of. Right. But when you get right down to it, tinsel and marabou today are the probably the main materials that are being used. Yep. The key thing to, you know, regardless of the materials, if you understand your blades, you know, you know, it's all about sound. Right. Okay. And, you know, the, the guy that I mentioned to you about that, you know, that did the, uh, the color test. Like they, they took musky eyes back in the day and they studied the rods and cones. That's how they saw that they would see. Green is really strong. Mm -hmm. So I have a tendency to use a lot of greens, you know, wherever I'm fishing. Yep. Okay. You know, green is a big color anywhere. Right. But, you know, contrast blades like black and orange, orange, orange is a good blade. They see orange really well. Mm -hmm. Orange is a color that usually does really well, like in the later in the day, you know, mid-morning, mid-afternoon yep. is strong. Ironically, some of the blades colors, when you look at gold, like when you look at copper, copper's orange. Yeah. In water. In water. You know, gold is just, a, it stands out tremendously. And silver actually turns white. Interesting. It turns white underwater. Yeah. These are all the things that you don't even realize. I mean, it's a whole new world under, underwater. You know, to a certain extent. Sure, it is. It's a whole different. That's a whole different thing underneath there. Yep. The other thing he told me that was interesting: every set of eyes that he studied, they were all nearsighted. Oh yeah. Every muskie that he studied was nearsighted. So you know that just that, and and I always told him, I said, why don't you write a book? Right. And he said, Rich, because if I write a book, there's always going to be debate. I don't want to deal with it. This is what I do for a living. Yep. And I, I'm not, I don't want to get into that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there's just a, a tremendous amount of knowledge from stuff like that. Yeah, there is. Um, the key thing, I think, with bucktails is just, you know, just to recap a little bit, get to know your blades. Remember, French willows run deeper. Indiana's are intermediate and your Colorado's and you know are your highest running blades yep. But the key thing is what attracts a fish to a bucktail is the sound and vib uh, Vibration and there is one thing that we do to bucktails that a lot of guys aren't aware of So you have one of your rods here. Yep. I want you to throw this bucktail now I was already messing with this one a little bit So you go ahead right. and I want you to throw this bucktail let me tell you something, over the years, it's getting tough to get, as I'm getting older. 
you know. We're all getting older, Rich. Oh man, I watched the way you just jumped up there. I used to be able to do that, <laughs> you know. Yep. I want you to throw that and tell me what you feel. Okay. You know. So right now he's throwing a regular bucktail that came out of the package and he's cranking it in. That's a marabou bucktail. We use these a lot in the late spring, early summer on the foliage. It's a basically a higher running bucktail. Yep. A lot of fish are shallower. What it, would it feel like? Smooth. It's smooth. smooth. Okay, it's now smooth. I want to show you something. What we do to bucktails, and I know a lot of guys, younger guys, are going to say this seemed kind of hokey. Listen, all bucktails are made on a shaft. Yep. Most of my bucktails, I prefer a 48 thousandths because I want, I want the blade to vibrate harder. But what I do to all my bucktails, and it doesn't matter, um, is I take and I curl them. I actually curl the shaft, you know, and then when I get up here, I actually take and curl just above the clevis a little more. So you can see now, it's kind of a half moon, right? Yeah. Why don't you throw it now and tell me what you feel. Interesting. It's funny you do that because there was, there was, there's been bucktails over the years that I've caught a number of fish on that have obviously kinked right. and they keep catching fish. So I, I, I just, just the note just from- Just curious what you're going to feel. Yeah. Oh, well, there's way more vibration, though. It exactly. It, it, you can feel it in the rod tip. Exactly, because the blade's got to work harder on that bent shaft. And so, therefore, feel it? Yeah, you can see it's bent in the, in the water. Yeah, That's but there's, there's two things. One, by bending the shaft of the bucktail, and you might want to show that. Yeah, and that one. wasn't that much, either. And it, it doesn't take a lot. Yeah. One, it provides like almost a keel so it doesn't spin and rotate through the water. Sure. Secondly, because you're bending that shaft, it actually, the bucktail blade pounds a lot harder, has to work harder, which is putting emitting more vibration out into the water. Yeah. So, you know, and as, you know, as far as these bucktails go, you know, there is just, you know, this thing right here, this is called a willow rage. And I'm telling you, you need to check these out. Um, I want you to try this and see what you think you of this. You gotta put that on Jake's Beast. Yeah, Jake, this is your stuff right here, man. This is really the 50 inch 50 master inch here. Yeah. You might wanna try this. I mean, t I mean, if you, like I said, you, if you go to Rocky Point Tackle and you actually listen to the sound test that they did on this bait it'll blow your mind of what it sounds like underwater sure it's tremendous i think in the and these are fairly hard to find the one shot that has them i think here in wisconsin right now that i know of and i, and I don't want to offend anybody if, if, if it's different but i just know that you know you can get a full line of colors from ross's sports shop up in phillips okay he is like the, i know he's the dealer but what do you think of that Oh yeah, you can feel that thing. Pound. Yeah. And you gotta have that beast. I mean, you know, look at I'm old I'm old school and I actually got it I bought two beasts this year because yep. that makes life a lot easier. Right. It's like nothing. What yep. do you think? Yeah, that is. But here's the thing. This bait right now, this willow rage, is accounting for a lot of fish right now and guys are keeping it quiet that's the big thing they're keeping their mouth shut they don't want people to know about it yeah you can feel every time that thing revolves around you can see it in the look at how too. it vibrates yeah it just pounds that's interesting yeah but it stays down and it's moving a lot of fish and i don't know it's doing a good job um so Again, if they contact Ross's or go to Ross's site, they can see them. You get to it and you see what you think of that thing. Yeah, we'll see if we can get that 50 on you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, as far as marabou bucktails, that's what I've gotten to is I, I use tinsel, but I do use marabou uh, in the, you know, the late spring, early summer of the year, and then also in late summer, early fall as the water temperatures cool down. But you know, when a bucktail company actually layers their hair, look how nice that, how full that looks. Yeah. But it doesn't have a lot of hair. <clears throat> the, the guy, I'm gonna tell you, there's, there's two guys that tie marabou's for me, but this guy here, this is, uh, the, the guy that makes this, his name is Judd Dvorak, and he owns Indian Creek Bucktails. I, I think he's probably the finest marabou bucktail tire 
probably in this industry. Um, he comes up with stuff like you've never seen. Look at this. I mean, that's pretty funky. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, again, I tune his bucktails. Uh, he actually layers his marabou so that it breathes a lot. And I think that's all important when you're using them. And uh, the key factor here with the bucktail is, is tune it. I mean, just curious, you throw a lot of eights. Throw that bucktail as it is right now. How's that feel to you? It's very smooth. It's smooth, exactly. And see, that's what I don't want. You know, I personally have found that when I tune my bucktails, if you bring that to me now, now I'm gonna tune it, okay? Matter of fact, I am gonna leave this bait with you guys, and you guys can fight over who gets us again. What I was showing Russ is I'm taking it, I'm bending this wire, he uses that 48 thousandths wire, and I'm bending it, and I'm coming up here, and I'm bending more on the shaft right here. Notice how I'm placing my, four, my thumb and my three fingers, and I'm bending it up just like that. Okay, now, tell me what you feel. Feel a difference? Yeah, you can actually feel the blades now. You can feel the blades pound. Yep. And when the, the harder those blades have to work, that tells you that there's, look at, look at how that marabou is flaring versus the first time. Yep. Look at how it's breathing. Big difference, huh? Yeah, you can actually feel it. When I pull it in close like this, I can feel the rod tip actually ticking. How I got into this is years ago, we used to make a bucktail I was one of the people with musky buster lures. There's one thing here now with bucktails. We, you know, we talked about the blades, the material, but the key thing is tuning your bucktails. Yeah. That's and a, you'll catch a lot more fish on here. Yeah, I mean, that's very interesting. I say hair, but it's, yeah. today it's tinsel, it's... Over the years, obviously, we've said it in some of our videos that the key for us is we always try to find different vibration something different you're, and, you're 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 ahead of everybody you know like we, we were talking in one of our um tech tip videos earlier this year as far as fit people fishing pressured water how do we do it what's our approach and one of them is find a different vibration i mean it's something different that the muskies haven't heard or felt and that's kind of that's an idea right there as far as a tip you know to tune your bucktails that's you know, that's how simple it is yeah. if, they, if you if they got one thing out of this you know hopefully they understand that blades have a purpose and sound and vibration is really what it's about when it comes to bucktails. Right. They're a great fish finding bait. Yep. You both felt it. You're telling them that. Yep. So hopefully they'll try it and that'll give them something to, in order to catch more fish on bucktails. Yeah, definitely. So, well guys, I think that's our that's session number one. So we did just touched on some bucktails, a little bit of Rich's history, and uh, we're gonna conclude this video right here. Stay tuned for some more episodes. We're gonna delve into I think some top waters next sure if that's what you want top waters we got dive and rise coming up too so stick around and uh, we'll be back with another one hope you guys enjoyed this episode we'll see you next time